Okay, ladies and gentlemen, my name is Matt. Welcome to the Sinpin. Now, before we get into the news, let me address the elephant in the room. Why am I wearing a toque? It's not because I'm a hipster or whatever you guys call it. I actually have a really bad hair day. But moving on to the Toronto Maple Leafs now. Now that Mike Bathcock is fired, it seems like we're getting a whole slew of dirty news that's been coming out. A lot of dirty laundry that's being aired. Um, there was obviously the Mitch Marin situation. I covered it at nauseum on this channel. Now, there seems to be another player that's coming out and he's saying, you know what? Bathcock, he wasn't the best of people. And that player in question is Johan Franzen. Obviously, this was back in the days when Bathcock coached the Red Wings. So, the story goes as such. This story actually didn't come from Franzen himself. It came from Chris Chelios, who was a teammate of his. Uh, he played under Badcock, and he was describing it on the Spitting Chicklets podcast. He said that Mike Babcock verbally assaulted forward Johan Franzen on the bench, contributing to Franzen suffering from a nervous breakdown, per Chris Chelios on Spitting Chicklets. A really good podcast, by the way. Franzen had been dealing with concussion issues and depressions at the time, but was downplaying it as the Red Wings were in the midst of a playoff run. Ken Holland was informed, who was the GM at the time, and supported Babcock, telling the team that if they didn't like Babcock's coaching style, come to him and he would try to move him. Chelios called it the worst thing he has ever seen. And that's coming from a guy who spent two seasons playing under Mike Keenan. So, what do I gather from this news? So, first of all, it wasn't Johan Franzen that said it. He later confirmed it. We'll get to that later. But uh, Chris Chelios, he says that the way that Mike Babcock treated Franzen, it was so bad he suffered a total mental breakdown. Now, they later said he suffers from depression. I will give Mike the benefit of the doubt. He, maybe he didn't know he was suffering from depression. A lot of these people, they often suffer in silence. But as I said with the Mitch Marnus situation... Dude, your methods, I don't think they work. Yeah, In that video, I said, I don't think they work in a modern NHL. Coming to think of it, I don't think they really work in any period, any NHL. If you mistreat a player, I don't think you're going to get results. Maybe that's just me. Again, I didn't coach in the NHL. I will say, though, Babcock did win a Stanley Cup. He did win a Stanley Cup. So I have a feeling that he's saying, well, this is the way I acted. We won the Cup. I'm going to use this for the teams moving forward. And he hasn't really adapted from that. I will say, though, as good as I think that Mike Babcock was, because he's not coaching at the time, he did coach a team with Nick Lidstrom, future Hall of Famer. If, if he isn't already in the Hall of Fame, I'm not sure. Zetterberg, future Hall of Famer. Pavel Datsuk, future Hall of Famer. I mean, he did play on a t uh, he did coach a team with really good players. I'm not undermining his role or anything, but he did coach a team with really good players. I would hate to see him use the mentality he had on that Stanley Cup winning team and try to reproduce it over and over again because like anything in hockey, the game evolves, the player evolves. I think that the coaches should also evolve. And I think that it's kind of shitty what he did to Franzen, but I will give him the benefit of the doubt. Maybe he didn't know what he was dealing with. Maybe he didn't know that he had depression. Maybe had he known about this whole depression, he may have taken his foot off the pedal a little bit. Now, the story doesn't totally end there. No, it doesn't, because we all know that it's Tris Chelios that came out and said it. Well, Johan Franzen did come out, and uh, he kind of confirmed what Chelios was saying, and this was in a Swedish publication. He says, and I quote, I get the shivers when I think about it. That was against Nashville in the playoffs. It was gross and nasty and shocking. But it was just one of a hundred things he did. The tip of an iceberg. As a coach, he is extremely careful and prepared. He's great at putting things together and putting a great system together and getting everyone to buy into it. It's his strong side. But then he's a terrible person. The worst person I've ever met. A bully who went after people. They could be cleaners in the arena in Detroit or anyone. He jumped on people just because. From 2011, I was terrified because of being in the rink. I was just focused on getting up in the mornings. That's when he went after me for the first time. And last year was the first time I slept naturally since then. So you see it. Ever since that Babcock has been out of his life, he slept perfectly. He slept like a baby. I do have to add though, you know, Ken Holland... 
I think he's a great GM. I think he's currently the GM of the Oilers, as a matter of fact. And you already see this year the Oilers turning their season around. I really don't agree with him with what he did. I think that part of a GM, you try to bring the players together, but also you try to bring the players and the coach together. I think that the fact that he went to the players and he said, guys, if you don't agree with Bathcock, if you don't agree with his methods, then you know, get your passport out, you're getting traded. I don't really agree with that. And what Johan Franzen said about Mike Bathcock, if you guys listen to this podcast called The Overdrive, I believe, it's with, um, uh, his name is The O-Dog, uh, O'Neill, Jeff O'Neill, that's it, Jeff O'Neill. He said something really similar. He said that he's yet to hear someone say that this guy is a good person. You know, they all say, echoing Johan Franzen's sentiments, they all say he's a great coach, he has a great system, you know, great play, great whatever. None of them say he's a good person. And I'm going to go on a limb here. I'm not in the locker rooms. I'm obviously not a hockey player. You guys, look at my physique. I don't have the physique of a hockey player. But, uh, you know, I'm going to go on a limb here and say I sort of agree with those guys. Mike Babcock, you won in the past, but you're a shitty person. I hope you look at yourself in the mirror and you realize, hey, if I'm to coach again in this league, I have to drastically turn everything around. I have to do a 360 degree turn, or I guess a 180 because 360 just come back to being the same thing. But I have to do a 180 degree turn and I have to change my methods. Maple Leafs fans, if you're listening and you've made it this far in the video, Maple Leafs fan, count your lucky stars you guys didn't end the season with Bathcock. Count your lucky stars. Babcock, sorry. I get called out for calling him Bathcock. Count your lucky stars. Watch it now with Sheldon o Keith. It's already started. Things are going to turn around. Things are going to look better. It kind of reminds me of when Tarion was the coach of the Penguins. And they were sort of going nowhere. I don't think that Tarion is as much of a tyrant as Babcock is. Although he's no angel himself. But they fired him. They got Dan Blasma. The Maple Police got uh, Keith. Watch things turn around now. Nothing, everything's looking good for you. And on the contrary, being a Canadians fan, everything is looking doom and gloom for me. So I hope you guys enjoyed this video. I hope it was informative. Um, I hope you guys like and subscribe. And uh, come on, guys, trying to reach a 1,000, trying to reach a 1,000. So if you agree with me, let me know why. If you disagree with me, please let me know in the comment. And as per usual, my name is Matt. Keep your stick on the ice.